Welcome back to Crime After Crime. It's February 2022. Special event coming up this month. Valentine's Day. Mushy gushy. Mushy gushy Valentine's <laughs> Day. And uh, we've got a topic that might line up a little bit with Valentine's Day. Possibly. We'll, Hopefully we'll the criminal aspect. Not so much, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever floats you're... your boat. Yeah. Hope you don't have to deal with Valentine's crime. <laughs> Oh, goodness. We are happy to be back with you guys here on Crime After Crime. Now, you guys, something fun is coming up. Yes. Just to let you guys know, you can come and meet me and John at CrimeCon in Las Vegas, April 29th through May 1st. All you have to do is use code Crime After Crime to get 10% off the standard pass. I do want to say, please do not wait. Passes do sometimes sell out. And if you don't want to miss the chance to meet or you don't want to miss a chance to meet many of your other favorite true crimers in person, there's always a lot of really awesome people there. Good fun time. I highly suggest it. And it's in yeah. Vegas. It's in Vegas. It's going to be a good time. We can't avoid it. So be a part of it. Use code crime after crime 10, get 10 or just crime after crime. Now I feel like I'm doing a HelloFresh commercial. Yep. Crime after crime 10, you'll get 10 free meals. <laughs> nope, just crime after crime, but you do get 10% off. Yeah, 10% off. Now I've now you've got me wondering. I wonder if I go to HelloFresh.com and I put in code crime after crime 100,000. Will I get 100,000 free meals, Danielle? Do you think? We should try it. <laughs> I'll test this out later and I'll let you know what happens. Yeah, they've got me wondering now. <laughs> They keep changing that number and they're giving away more and more. Anyway, uh, we need to get to the show before we do the HelloFresh commercial. It's time for the results from last episode, World's Worst Roommate. Danielle told the story of a lawyer who liked to live rent-free until he met his match and took things to a crazy level. I told the story of a college freshman who wanted to impress her Insta followers with stories of how she was absolutely torturing her dorm room roommate. Is that called a dormy? I I don't know. I kind of like did that. It, yeah, dormy. We'll coin dormy. It <laughs> how did it play out, Danielle? What happened? All right, you guys. So, dun, dun, dun. On the website poll, I received 87% of the votes and John received 13%. Whoa, 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 whoa. Check, check those numbers, please. 87%, Danielle? That's pretty wild. I'm coming off a streak of winning like four episodes and I get thumped. I feel like it was something internally. <laughs> like my, <laughs> I'm so serious. My brain and body was like, you cannot let him do this to you any longer. It was something like, has to change. There was always this moment in the 80s movies where the hero would be getting severely beat up and then yeah. somehow would muster the energy <laughs> and there'd just be one big uppercut. That was me. And that was Danielle. That's, that's what did. happened. I uppercut. I did. And the same thing did happen on Twitter. 84% went to oh me and 16% to John. But I will, I have to say though, both of those stories were ridiculous. They Absolutely were. ridiculous. But yours took it to a new, it just took it to a different level. Well, I knew. It was I knew after My story was horrifying. It, it was horror. I mean, I think on the torture aspect of you yeah. know, torturing your roommate, I think my story might have edged it out a little oh, bit. Absolutely. But when you got a guy that winds up killing his brother, like it just, it took things way out to a different level. Yeah, um, and, he, and he was somehow doing that for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That topic took a turn. I didn't know what to expect. That was just a crazy episode in general. Well, I guess, Cup, it's been nice having you here, but you have to go back home over to Danielle. Oh, a what, what the? <laughs> Magic Hold on a trick. The crime after crime mug turned into a can of Red Bull somehow. Danielle. It did. What's happening over there? <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, actually, Something... you know what? Something happened to the mug. Not really. I've misplaced it. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, if, if I had something in my mug, it would be Red Bull anyways. And probably okay. not coffee. So All right. that can just be the placement for now. This episode not sponsored by Red Bull. Okay, <laughs> um, let's get to the topic. Uh, the topic, Danielle. Yes. It's quite simple. It's nudity. Mm -hmm. The listeners asked, and they've been asking for this one for a long time, quite honestly. Uh, I'm, we're, I'm questioning y'all, but all right. We yeah, went with it. We did. <laughs> we're finally getting to it. <laughs> Nude crimes. 
So according to lawyer referral website, hg.org, generally in America, nudity is, believe it or not, against the law and public places. What? Mo- I know. Hard to believe. Moreover, nudity is also generally illegal on a person's own property if the nude person is visible to the public, such as through an open window or sunbathing nude in someone's yard. Uh Uh-oh, time for some new curtains. Not those see-through ones either. Oh boy, I'm in trouble. In some situations, state laws may conflict with constitutional protections for freedom of expression, particularly if the nudity is part of an artistic performance or political demonstration. All right. So you're saying I, at least at a federal level, I still have the right because I was worried. I was worried I was going to have to cancel my performance of the Dancing Naked True Crimer show featuring Tim and Lance from Crawl Space, (laughs) Gray Hughes Investigates, Mike Morford, Steve Pacheco from Trace Evans. You should probably cancel that. However, there are no (laughs) federal level laws either for or against nudity. Interestingly enough. Yeah. Well, you might be interested to know, Danielle, that New York, Hawaii, Maine, Ohio, and Texas each have laws expressly allowing women to go topless in any location where men can. Equal rights, yo. I got to say that I personally really have no interest in that. (laughs) Well, I do. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder if that's why I went to CrimeCon Texas and you didn't. Honestly, Uh, probably. (laughs) <laughs> That'll make a lot of sense. Things are adding up now. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You might be interested to know, Danielle. Oh, I was going to say the same thing again. I just really wanted to drill it. <laughs> <laughs> you can be Let me relist. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to relist the states just because <laughs> I know there's people out there. Um, there are other states that have actually almost completely backed off of enforcing their nudity laws, such oh as my gosh. California. Some oh, other boy. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> now, while being naked has some gray areas especially as you get older thank you oh good grief (laughs) decent (laughs) exposure and public lewdness have very clear definitions laws and penalties from state to state in most states it is a criminal offense punishable by fines and or imprisonment and it actually might land you with a registered sex offender requirement restrictions the whole nine yards you don't want to be on that list no you do not Today, we are looking into cases where nudity and crime converge, and we're going to get started with a story told by the amazing and talented Danielle Hallen. Let's hear it, Danielle. What you got? Okay. I'm not going to lie. This topic, it almost did me in. I feel like this was like payback from last month. (laughs) I'm so serious. This sent me on a roller coaster. Most of the stories are kind of like funny one-liners, didn't have much backing to them. Yes. I really thought, you guys, Florida or Walmart would have my back on this one. Let me just point out, since I had to give you the mug, I got the Lacucci Florida mug. I thought it was going to come through for me. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, I was ready to throw in the towel and was planning on spending my 10-ish minutes listing about all the things that I love about working with John and how he's the king of research. I was like, forget it. I'm just doing a whole story on why John's the best and I don't deserve any votes. Oh. (laughs) But by some absolute miracle, literally last night at midnight. Dedication. I I found a story and all of its traumatizing videos. What? Exactly. What and you haven't sent me the links yet? What's I've going seen, on here? I've seen too much. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, I know I feel like I have a pretty good idea of, you know, what I consider a fun night out. But one man from Canada had an entirely different line of thought. Friday, October fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. 37 year old David Weaver headed out in Toronto, Canada for a night of fun. Now the night started out at a medieval times. <laughs> And for those What's of wrong you with that, that have, Danielle? <laughs> for those of you that have never been, it is an experience. Okay, I might so, have had a had a birthday party at medieval times. I've gone multiple in my times. Adulthood. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay, John. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically taken back in time to watch mm-hmm. kings fight, or not kings, but knights fight with daggers, swords, jousting. You know, you're eating large pieces of chicken with your bare hands you're Mm -hmm. drinking beers the size of your head personally i think it's great entertainment it's a fun experience 
But I mean, it's definitely not for everybody. But unfortunately, all of that medieval energy manifest in too real of a way with David Weaver. After a series of unruly events and some broken windows, David ended up being kicked out of the medieval times and instructed to never come back. But his fun had gone too far. He left a man with a black eye, missing a tooth. Did it's this guy a, like jump down in the ring and like start I, throwing down? What the? For the lo- I can't figure it out and they won't talk about it. So I feel like that's probably for a reason. Okay. But ultimately an ambulance was called and police arrived. But by this point, David had already run off into the night with even more tricks up his sleeve. Q Ripley's Aquarium, okay. also located in Toronto. Now, Ripley's is a much more popular attraction for tourists and locals alike. I can't possibly see why. Uh, And in 2021, it even managed to snag the winning spot in Ontario's Choice Awards in the attraction category, which I feel like is a feat in itself because I, how is it even open? You know, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it, but they proudly boast that. With nine galleries and over 20,000 animals, the aquarium hit its 10 million visitor mark in 2018, just five years after opening. So they started doing this fun thing where every second Friday at the aquarium, they would host jazz nights. You know, this fun way for locals to enjoy the beauty of the aquarium in a more relaxed and adult setting. But it seems that mischief managed to get into the middle of this night at Ripley's as well. At 10.30 p.m., Toronto police were called to report an incident at the aquarium. They were informed that a man had stripped down to his birthday suit in the middle of the large crowd trying to enjoy their jazz evening and jumped headfirst into one of the aquarium's tanks. Whoa. After the a loud- shark aquarium tank? Oh, just, <laughs> just wait. Oh, no, I was joking. After a loud splash and gasps from the crowd, security guards came to check out what the fuss was about and panicked when they saw a completely naked man swimming around in what is known as the Dangerous Lagoon. No. What the hell? The name is so cheesy (laughs) and way too straightforward. Mm -hmm. I feel like it leaves nothing for the imagination. I feel like possibly that's why this man was drawn to it. I don't know, just a guess. But either way, this lagoon is a 2.9 million liter tank and possibly the most popular of all the galleries as it houses the sharks in the aquarium. I was joking, Danielle. He was not. He was not. He was very serious. Jeez. Stripped down, jumped into a shark tank. Was he wearing a paper crown? (laughs) Surprisingly, no. He just, he was just feeling extra confident. I guess. I'm telling you, Medieval Times does something to you. It does amp you up. I've I've been there. It's the the seasoning in those seasoned potatoes. I tell you, there's something. There is. There's got to be something. (laughs) So this was obviously a situation that's dangerous for not just the skinny dipping man, but also the animals. The security guards approached him from the side of the lagoon. There's videos of this. He's happily swimming around the tank, and they're just on the side going, excuse me, sir. (laughs) Sir. Well, trying. they're trying to keep the jazz feel and you know, keep the jazz vibe. They are. Yeah. They are. And they were they were trying to demand in a very polite way that he immediately get out and put some clothes on and leave. The man yeah. did ignore security for a bit. He took like a five minute swim with the sharks and then it seemed like he finally agreed to exit. So just as he pulls himself out of the shark tank, right? And at this point, everyone's watching. This let security take a deep breath. He's given the crowd a good look. Like, <laughs> Shamu himself. <laughs> he just full on back flops. And yes, you heard what? that right. I will not consider what he did a backflip. <laughs> he just straight. <laughs> he just straight up back flops right back into the water. I mean, flying through the air completely naked. Cheers exploded from the crowd. <laughs> Really? This is all on video. I completely suggest everyone watch all the videos. It's there's a bunch of people, a bunch of people that were there that just got bored with the jazz, huh? And they're like, oh, finally, something interesting is happening. Oh, and I mean, it was real interesting. (laughs) He just leaps. It's all flying everywhere. It's a disaster. (laughs) 
So the onlookers now were way more interested, obviously, in this man than the jazz. And they all had their phones out filming the event. Every angle imaginable was captured. Imaginable. Imaginable. Every yeah, angle it. imaginable was captured, including those from underneath. So this particular lagoon... <laughs> <laughs> this particular lagoon had like one of those tunnels mm -hmm. where you like get on like the conveyor belt and it like slowly takes you along. These people are in there trying to look up and see all the fish and sharks and it's dead. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're seeing something completely different. Okay. Mm. These videos are posted to social media showing this man swimming laps and it even shows that during his back flop, he came dangerously close. <laughs> I refuse to call it flip. I really do. <laughs> he came dangerously close to jumping directly onto a sand tiger shark. Whoa. Jeez. Now, we do have sand tiger sharks where I live. They are not the same as like tiger tiger sharks that are yeah. very aggressive. Yeah. They are not known to be aggressive. However, I mean, any animal that you possibly land on. Mm hmm. He yeah. really, he really, that was, that was scary. Well, and at this point, honestly, I'm, I'm more concerned with the animal getting hurt. Exactly. <laughs> than Me too. Medi and medieval times. Exactly. And the aquarium was thinking the same. Yeah. So after repeated attempts to draw this man out of the water, he did finally come out a second time, very pleased with himself and was kind of escorted away from the tank. Now, Peter Doyle, the general manager stated that there is apparently a protocol that prevents them from detaining guests for any reasons. So despite David's actions, they couldn't do anything more than just call the police. They couldn't but hold they couldn't him. Even, yeah. They couldn't do anything at all other than call the police. That's so weird. Because so, I know like if you're in a supermarket or something, they could at least detain you until the police show up, like their security yeah, staff. They, but. I guess have hmm. this protocol and i tried to figure out why there's nothing explaining it that's just their protocol so they couldn't yeah. do anything so for the second time that night david threw on a pair of shorts and some shoes and took off soaking wet running off and the left night. another attraction in, in shambles behind yes him. i wow. mean all of downtown toronto is just on fire <laughs> at this point <laughs> Now, Ripley's Aquarium was infuriated that someone would disturb all of their guests through indecent exposure, doing back frips like flips like free willy, okay? Mm -hmm. Literally all pun intended, putting naked, themselves naked in danger. Naked flops. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the aquarium staff stated that the welfare of their animals is paramount, and they planned on finding this man and pressing charges. They couldn't okay. hold him. They couldn't detain him, but they were going to find him. Yeah. Surveillance showed that David approached the ticket booth for the jazz event with a woman in tow at around 10 p.m. that night. Instead of enjoying any of the other galleries, they beelined it for the dangerous lagoon. So I feel like there was a plan in place, and that is Seems what they like believed it. as well. Because yeah. by 1026, he was naked in the water. Right, right. Police were able to quickly release David's photo to the media and a description in hopes that someone would recognize him or maybe calling him out for this absolutely ridiculous stunt. He would bring himself forward. They explained that this man, you know, was driving around possibly in a green Dodge caravan that they captured on surveillance and that he was missing a front tooth. Just casual details of this already bizarre story. But... Everyone pretty much had already seen this man before police even put everything out because all of the videos went viral worldwide. Sure, sure. People already knew about this naked Shamu guy. Now, at the time, police had absolutely no idea that the two incidents were connected. They were being investigated separately, different detectives, totally not looking too much into it until a press release that Sunday where they released the pictures and they're like, huh, wait a minute, these these guys look very similar. <laughs> so they were able to say that this was a connected incident. He went from one place to the other and they were trying to capture him. And sure enough, four days later, a vehicle stop ended up taking David down in Thunder Bay, Ontario. He spent three nights in jail. He got two charges of mischief and also assault causing bodily harm. They decided they were going to split those into two completely separate things. Uh, but he did end up being released on bail with the agreement that he would not go within 100 meters of either of the venues mm -hmm. or 50 meters of the man that he assaulted, which I still have no idea why he even assaulted him, by the way. Yeah. 
Well, but, you know, at medieval times, it gets really rowdy because mm-hmm. you're voting for the red knight. You've got yep. another guy across the way voting for the blue knight. And that's and who just knows? blasphemous. <laughs> yeah, he might have he might have just picked a fight with the guy Things that's voting for the hand. yellow knight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things just get out of hand. I'm telling you guys, you've got to you got to go to try this out. <laughs> but he was also told that his actions were likely due to excessive alcohol abuse. And they were like, dude, you've got anger issues. So he was ordered to seek out counseling. Now, a year later in 2019, he's finally facing a judge to explain his actions that night. He said, and I quote, I just want to take the time to apologize for wasting your time, your honor, the court's time. I want to apologize for my actions of last year. He seemed genuinely apologetic. He did plead guilty to one of the two counts of mischief and said that he was trying to make amends. He said that he had donated $500 to the World's Wildlife Fund. Hmm. And his lawyer also stepped up and said, you guys, David was just dealing with a lot of deep issues. So the lawyer said, you know, he struggled with alcohol abuse for over two decades after his own brother murdered their father when he was 15 years old. Yeah, so he experienced a really traumatic life event. Yeah. And unfortunately, he was never given counseling after that. Mm. He was not given any sort of support to kind of cope and learn healthy ways to cope. So instead it led to a self-destructing path that landed David into nights of medieval fights and skinny dipping with sharks. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. That's but, weird because I know um, Canada has universal health care. I just don't know how it works with mental health. Yeah. And if, you know, I, th- I think you're probably going to have to go reaching for those types of resources. Exactly. You know? um, hmm. But he was like, you know, he's going to counseling. He received the orders to do so. He's trying to get his life on track. And so yeah. if you pair that with the fact that he was also apparently a fishing guide at the time, he said he hated seeing animals in cages. You know, he really just wanted to make a point. So despite, you know, these, yeah, well, despite these beautiful visions of change and this lawyer, you know, offering all these situations up as to why he might have done this, and then he's in it for the animals, and then this apology that David directly gave to the judge, once he was handed down a 12-month suspended sentence and released, he walked out of court, faced the media, had a big old smile on his face and said, yeah, I don't regret a thing. Oh, man. He was really? like, I would do it all over again. And guess what? I wasn't even drunk when I did it the first time. <sighs> That's so disappointing. Yeah. So are more naked shenanigans possible for him in the future? I honestly wouldn't put it past him. Is he doing this? Like, I got a sense about halfway through the story. Like, is this guy a TikToker or a YouTuber? Is he doing this for so, social media attention? The Crown, they're kind of their case was that he was doing this for attention. They're like, there's no other, yeah. you know, way to explain this. Why else would you walk into an aquarium? Right. Str- I mean, and he didn't just like quietly walk over to the tank and undress. Like he was in the middle of the crowd. Like there's yeah. dozens and dozens of people. He's streaking he a private strips event. strips down. Yeah, yeah. Just walks through the cow- crowd casually and was like, woo, right. bloop, into the water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But... I don't, I don't I really don't think we'll ever know though. I think he just kind of got a kick out of it. I think well the interesting thing about this is that I was I was noticing while I was going through all of the different stories. It was saying that mental a mental crisis most of the time is why we've got naked criminals on our hands. Yeah. Most of yeah. the time there's some sort of mental crisis because to them there's just a lot of disorganized thinking when they're going through something like that. And so sure. in their mind, it's completely reasonable to totally strip down and do something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so, I don't know, it's just very interesting. It brought up a lot of different questions and it was, I was happy though, because a lot of these different scenarios that I obviously wasn't able to cover on here, if it was something like that, Usually they sent in someone to come and speak to the person first before sending in police. That made me really happy, but it was interesting, you know, because you've got all these very clickbaity headlines that are very funny, but most of the time when you dug a little bit deeper, there was something going on. And I feel like that was the same exact thing for him. And while I don't know if he was having a mental crisis necessarily, I mean, your brain is rewired after experiencing something like that. That's a big trauma. So there is no telling what in his brain it was satisfying by him doing that. 
Well, and there's something about like it seems like there's something with him and and acting out or kind of yeah. lashing out in that way, and yep. even getting through the court process. The first thing he does is he goes outside and then he lashes out again or acts out mm -hmm. again. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it does seem like there is definitely a component like that that's at play. It's because I mean it's jumping into a though. tank with sharks. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. Well, I mean. If it was like a political statement, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like if, if he was wearing a shirt that said free the sharks or, you know, something like. He wouldn't be doing it, something to harm them at the same time. Right, right. But it also seems, um, I don't know, it's just the attention getting mm -hmm. aspect is just so strong there. But, that mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't negate um, a mental health crisis, of course. So, yeah. Oh, it's disappointing. I, just, I hope he gets the help that he needs but i hope he does too it doesn't seem like he's too interested in getting it he doesn't yeah. fully aware of what he's doing right right and i mean he it just seemed like he was kind of going out and seeking problems that night and who on earth was this woman who was just with him and letting it happen that's yeah that's i an saw her mentioned too. like twice and i was like what are you doing lady yeah well i was waiting for you to tell me like oh yeah. it was his, then when the <clears throat> cops caught up with <clears throat> him they found out it was his birthday or like you know there was some justification for him that he was going to go out and, and do all this stuff nope. at those types of locations. Um, that was just his idea of a fun night out. Really weird. Really, mm -hmm. really weird. Don't know what to think about that guy. Me either. <laughs> Me either. Oh, so effectively he gets off with a, a slap on the wrist. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Well, Danielle. It's a good start. It's a good start to the naked crimes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have much similar going on with our cases. Ooh, that's a first. Yeah, I think I think we're going to have a little bit of a different story coming up on the other oh, side of the commercial break. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> we'll be right back. Did your last HelloFresh meal feel a little naked? You can now dress them up using HelloFresh's newest feature, Hello Custom. You can swap out one protein for another, swap out a side dish, add a protein to an amazing veggie meal. You now get more choices, more variety, and you can tailor your order more than ever before. It's all easy to do from the HelloFresh app, your one-stop shop for changing your delivery day, your food preferences, your plan size, skipping a week, and of course, trying out Hello Custom. It's all right there on your smartphone. Now, I wanted to let you guys know, please be sure to try out the black bean and poblano flautas. Oh my goodness. I know all of my meals, my favorites involve black beans and poblanos. Just trust me. <laughs> it's crispy, delicious. The little bit of heat from the poblanos, perfection. Oh yeah, we love that one too, being in a vegetarian household. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you want to save money by ordering less takeout, learn how to cook, like I can now, or prioritize your wellness, HelloFresh is here to help. Haven't tried it yet? Go to hellofresh.com slash crimeaftercrime16 and use code crimeaftercrime16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Let them simplify and tastify your life. Go to hellofresh.com slash crimeaftercrime16 and use code crimeaftercrime16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Try America's number one meal kit on for size right now. All right, you guys, welcome back. I'm so interested to see what your story is because this was such a hard research and it was quite literally a miracle that I stumbled upon this skinny dipping shark tank man. <laughs> I don't <laughs> even know how name. I don't I don't even know how else to describe him. That's a good name. That's a good name so, for the story. I like it. I can't wait to see what you managed to come up with. Well, Danielle, I went back to the well. The well known as Florida. Oh, if I take boy. a sip from the Lucucci <laughs> mug. Florida, never going to let you down. I will say a lot of the small stories I looked into. Florida. Florida and Ohio. No. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm just saying. Interesting. Yeah, I know. I might have a little Ohio later to touch on. Um, this story asks a very interesting question, Danielle. Could a naked criminal actually help save the day? Hmm. Mm. This takes place in a part of Florida called Dunedin, which is why I like to call this story Dunedin Some Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> September 6th, 2021, Dunedin, Florida. It was 8.07 p.m. on a Sunday night. 
typically a quiet time in the neighborhood, but not on this evening. Sheriff's deputies responded to calls about three suspicious male subjects. They arrived to find two 18-year-olds and one 16-year-old, and each of them was armed. One of the 18-year-olds, Miles Abbott, had an active warrant from a case back in 2018, Knowing he was about to face up to those old charges and probably tack on some new ones, Miles made a decision. He took his gun and he ran. While deputies detained the two other boys, they quickly dispatched other teams to track the fleeing Miles Abbott. Miles reportedly fired a shot near some neighbors who were watching the action unfold, and somehow he fired a second shot right into his own thigh. Oh boy. Yeah. Things are going downhill very quickly. Really quick with Miles. Somehow he continues fleeing and he's got canine deputies and even a flight unit, deputies and helicopters, on his tail, continuing the chase. The foot chase would turn into something far more dangerous about a mile away in a nearby neighborhood on Michigan Boulevard. There, the flight unit found Miles. He had set up on the rooftop of a local home. So Miles, with his wounded leg, climbs up on the roof of this house, but what concerned the flight unit the most was that Miles was pointing his gun at the deputies that were pursuing him on the ground. Oh, boy. Thankfully, the guys on the ground got the call in time to avoid danger, and they started their work. They were trying to talk Miles down, but he refused to surrender. So this foot chase had now changed shape and was officially a standoff. In the house below the roof that Miles was on was a family with a two-year-old child. Oh, that's so scary. Yeah. The family hid together in a bathroom while the husband stayed on the phone with 911. They would be held up in that bathroom for hours hearing footsteps and shouting just coming from their own roof up above. SWAT was deployed. An armored vehicle arrived on scene. Uh, neighbors coming outside to see what was going on heard yells from deputies to get back in your house. Negotiations teams were dispatched. Helicopters flew overhead. The street was completely lined with law enforcement vehicles. It looked like something out of an action movie. Like pictures of it are insane. The whole street. I mean, it's a standoff at yeah. this point, an armed standoff. They wanted to make sure that no one else was harmed and hopefully. They were hoping that they could get miles down without any further risk or mm -hmm. violence. So the hours, hours, Danielle, literally start ticking by. The sheriffs pulled out every card they could to end the standoff peacefully. They even reached out to Miles' sister, brought her to the scene, had her try to talk to him. Didn't work. Ultimately, everything was proving unsuccessful. Thankfully, around hour four, the family inside the home were brought out by a detective and several officers details on how that was arranged i don't know yeah. if they like told miles hey miles let us get these people out yeah um but somehow they worked something out where they could get the family out of there things were extremely tense as the standoff had been going on for about six hours at this point point. and he has a bullet wound he's got a bullet wound in his this. thigh this yep. is just he couldn't yep. have possibly been comfortable so that is some determination on his part to not be caught yeah he's how up did there. he think that was going to end I don't know. I mean, he's up there with an yeah. armed, you know, he's armed. So mm -hmm. uh, who knows? I don't know what his expectation was, but he's 18 years old. He probably doesn't yeah. know yeah. What, what he's thinking at that point. So deputies were weighing their options. Do they continue to wait him out? You know, do they try to fire some non-lethal beanbag rounds to let him know that they're serious, especially now that they had the family out, you know, they got the family safe, the scene's kind of locked down. They could maybe do something a little offensive mm -hmm. like that or wait for a different type of expert to show up. Now, while some versions of this story say that authorities use the beanbag rounds mm -hmm. and quote, special equipment to force him off the roof, others detail what that special equipment might have actually been. The choice was made for the pondering deputies when all of a sudden a golf cart showed up. It drove right through the perimeter set up by the deputies and right between the two sides, the two armed sides that were facing off. Was this some law enforcement negotiation expert? The golf cart then headed straight towards the house that Miles was on top of. Police screamed for the driver to stop, but she wasn't listening. 
28-year-old Jessica Smith was not the expert negotiator they were hoping for, but maybe she was the hero that we all need. <laughs> you see, she had a very good chance of getting an 18-year-old's attention and maybe even coaxing him down off the roof. A police report said Ms. Smith, quote, had a distinct odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from her person and she was completely nude. Could you imagine? I mean, you're that many hours into a standoff and some naked girl just rolls up in a golf cart. <laughs> um, at this point, I would like to ask the lovely and talented Danielle Hallen <laughs> to please recreate audio from the scene. Here, I'll be the golf cart. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Come on, Danielle. This is awful. Is I mean... Was she aware of what was going on around her? We'll get we we'll, I got some more details here. Let's let's keep this going. All right. Oh, no. Jessica Smith, who let's be clear, she's not natively a Florida woman. She's actually from Massachusetts. Uh, she refused to get out of the golf cart when ordered to do so by the sheriff. So they're yelling at her. She's heading towards this this house where the standoff's happening. Their report, the deputies' report, states. While deputies were on perimeter, the defendant drove past several marked units while driving on a golf cart. The defendant proceeded to drive past me after I gave her verbal commands as she was approaching the target house of where the armed subject was on the roof. The defendant refused to exit the golf cart upon demand. Therefore, she was assisted out and handcuffed. <laughs> She's probably like, you know what? I'm taking care of this on my own. They've been out here for too long. I know, I know, huh? This is jamming up my street. My, the pizza guy can't get here to make his delivery. What is this? Oh, my beer. <laughs> well, and I love the phrasing on that, too. Isn't it nice, Danielle, that they assisted her out? They did. The, they assisted her out. Yeah, a naked, blonde, 28-year-old. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll, I'll be the one to assist her out of the golf cart. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, now, let's be fair about this. I did take a look at a map just to confirm, and mm -hmm. the standoff was happening only about two blocks away from a golf course. So maybe Jessica was just looking for stray balls. No, no. <laughs> of what kind, John? Okay. <laughs> of what kind? <laughs> and I did look into this. I'm, I'm not kidding. It is legal to drive golf carts on the streets of Dunedin, as long okay. as the speed limit is 30 miles per hour or lower. However, you obviously can't drive under the influence. You can't drive anything under the influence. Yeah. So Miles was forced off the roof, either by beanbag rounds and special equipment and like the official explanation, mm -hmm. or possibly, I'm just saying maybe, I don't know, by a naked blonde 28 year old in a golf cart, depending on what you want to believe. It's up to you. I Quote, have my feelings on that. I do too. Uh, quote, deputies from the SWAT team took Abbott into custody and he was transported to a local hospital for treatment on his self-inflicted gunshot wound, the sheriff's office said. Deputies recovered the firearm and later determined it to be stolen. Uh, not only that one, I think one of the other kids had a stolen firearm, if not both of the others oh, had a stolen firearm. Miles is facing charges of being a felon in possession of a firearm, carrying a concealed firearm, grand theft of a firearm, resisting an officer, uh, I think... It says without violence. I've seen that term come yeah. up a couple times with these charges. It's interesting they would say that. Um, although yeah. I guess he didn't, you know, he ran away from the scene. It's not like he got into an actual physical altercation. Exactly. Um, there's a little question around the gunshot that happened around the neighbors because the way that some of the official explanations describe that, they kind of say that he might have taken a shot towards the neighbors or even at oh, man. the neighbors. but. I don't know. They're being pretty clear here. Well, that clearly his aim is just awful. So do we really know where he was shooting? Uh, oh, no. I mean, he hit himself There's in the thigh, Daniel. No telling. Uh, he also faces two counts of aggravated assault, two counts yeah. of aggravated assault of a law enforcement officer. See, that's weird. I don't know why the, they would have that resisting an officer yeah. without violence. But uh, also charges of loitering and prowling. And of course, that's all on top of whatever his warrant, his active warrant was for. Well, that the, didn't go the way he thought it would. No, no. Uh, it thankfully ended peacefully enough yeah. in terms of mm -hmm. getting him down and no one else getting harmed. The other 18-year-old and 16-year-old also faced charges for theft of and carrying a concealed firearm, with the 16-year-old getting an additional charge for possession of a firearm being under the age of 18. 
the homeowner would remain unnamed in the press, but mm -hmm. he did give a couple quotes. He said, uh, it was a constant attempt to de-escalate the situation. While it was scary, I never thought there would be a shootout, but I was prepared to grab my wife and child if that did happen. Thank yeah. God it didn't happen. And the hero of this story, at least for me, because she is now officially saved the day. <laughs> a nude criminal that saved the day. Jessica Smith was arrested for resisting an officer, once again, without violence. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly, I don't think they issued any DUI charge, which is kind of just weird. Like, I, uh, you know, I feel like that whole scene was probably so distracting in every way, shape and form. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've got so many questions. If I was there, I would be so confused. I probably wouldn't even be able to write my name properly. <laughs> I'm so serious. Oh, investigators noted, quote, the defendant's actions and inability to follow directions put multiple deputies at risk for potentially getting shot at. Apparently, Danielle, this is a thing, but when your eyeballs get all big and your jaw drops to the floor, it makes you an easier target. That's that's what I understand mm -hmm. for why they're mm -hmm. more at risk. Yep. Why was she there? Reports, That's what I want to know. Yeah. Well, reports say that Jessica had absolutely nothing to do with the standoff. She didn't know Miles, and I don't think she even knew the family in the home. At least that's what the husband says, wink, wink. Oh, boy. <laughs> Questionable things are happening here. It is a big question. Like, why Why was she driving towards mm -hmm. that house? I don't know. Like, specifically to that house. Yeah. Uh, I can't find any comments from her online, but of course, her story did go viral, and perhaps she just didn't want to feed the fire. Uh, the only reason I could think of for her driving over there was that she saw all these flashing lights, heard a bunch of people yelling, and thought that she was headed toward the Dancing Naked True Crimer show starring myself, <laughs> oh, my no. buddies from Crawl Space. I thought this Gray was canceled. Hughes. I thought this was canceled. <laughs> uh, canceled again by Danielle. <laughs> Thank you, Tampa Bay.com, WFLA, WTSP, Fox 13 News, True Crime Daily, and Boston Herald for information contributing to today's story. Danielle, I have to say, I just wish she would do one interview. Jessica, please let me interview you. You know, I'm. No, really. I'll take care of you. I just really got to hear more about that night because I want to know what led up to. I know, that I need moment. to under I need to understand this because like it seems very intentional. It seems like, like it. But, way too intentional. But even if it's not, like even if you're like just blitzed out of your mind, right? What how like where were you? Maybe how it was you... just like the liquid courage. I'm telling you, what if she Maybe. was like, you know, I'm tired of hearing these people screaming. I've had enough. I'm <laughs> driving over and handling this myself. I'm so serious. I feel like that's such a huge possibility. I mean, just doesn't this sound like an amazing film idea? Like just it does. The the story leading up mm -hmm. to naked 28 year old driving up on yep. a police shoot like you wouldn't even believe it i think if you saw no. it in the movie you'd be like that's so dumb that's what like, i'm saying if yeah. i was an officer on that scene i would just <laughs> well like, how do you even <laughs> i don't want to probably exhausted and they're like so deep into trying to convince sure. this guy to come down sure i'd be like you're joking yeah i mean i don't what now you know, i don't like I don't like kicking around the police department or, or the deputies in this case too much, but can we just ask a kind of simple question? Mm -hmm. Who the heck set up that perimeter? Yeah, it wasn't very strong. Yeah, who was working it? I mean, she had a drunk, a drunk woman Again, that just drove people, right through the it. the people with the very wide eyes and jaws on the floor. It just <laughs> exactly. totally, it disrupts your ability to do anything. <laughs> it does. Total, I'm telling you, confused everyone. I'm also wondering, is there any chance that those teenage boys asked to be in the same squad car as Jessica on the way back? I mean, <laughs> I just. Ah, so uh, whenever we leave here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I be in that car, please? <laughs> so I'm assuming she had no clothes with her. Where did the golf so. cart come from? Did she steal the golf cart? Was she staying there? Why uh, was that's she what naked? I mean. Did she run out of the house? I just, I have too many questions here. The questions go on and on. Mm -hmm. Jessica, we need an interview, please. <laughs> come on the show. We need to know. Oh All these my important gosh. questions from the true crimers. Oh, so that's it, Danielle. That's what I got for you guys. That was a good one. Mm. That was a really good one. Jessica saves the day, at least for she the did. story. Yeah, she, t she really saved she the day. She did, because there's no way you can convince me that after that long, it was beanbags that got him off the roof. 
it's it sounds kind of weird like i don't know how that works like what do you do you start pelting him with bean bags and he's like ow ow i mean he's already hurt he shot himself ow, ow. yeah that <laughs> didn't hurt him to the point where he's like yeah okay i'll get down right i don't know um uh, like i think it would be more effective if they were talking about mm -hmm. they had used tear gas or something mm -hmm. you know through a canister of tear gas up there he can't breathe he's coughing he rolls off the edge of the roof or something like that but yep. And they they weren't clear. They did specifically say they had the specialized equipment. They would not be clear about what that was. Um, and it's really funny, Danielle, because there are a ton of versions of that story that don't mention Jessica at all. And then I was there about are, to say, I feel like they just want to erase her. They're like, we can't admit that this is what did it. It, it seems like it. there's just a bunch of stories where she's just wiped out of it. And then all of a sudden there's this handful where yeah. they're telling the whole story and she's yeah. a part of it. And then when it went viral, there was just this, you know, drunk 28 year old woman drives into a standoff. <laughs> telling you, she does not get the recognition she deserves for getting no. him off the roof. That's telling the you. She's the hero that we all need. <laughs> she is. You're going to take the cup back from me, except just not my Red Bull. I'll try to find the actual cup and give it back. <laughs> no, I'm taking the Red Bull. I just... kind of rely on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I'm not willing to hand that over. <laughs> well, as always, we do have extra stories. And we, we reached a little deeper on the extra stories because mm -hmm. we knew that our stories were going to be just a little shorter than usual. So uh, let's get it started. Danielle. Please tell us about something at a funeral home. What is this? Oh, boy. This is probably one of my favorites. So in April of 2020, 30-year-old Ethan Palazzo was on a mission. Okay? okay. He was on a mission to go speak to his girlfriend. Sounds reasonable. Nothing sure. out of the norm. Except apparently Ethan thought that he was going to go speak to his girlfriend by breaking into a funeral home, stripping down completely naked, and wandering about. Does she now, work at the funeral home? You know, I left the story with just as many questions as I have about Jessica. <laughs> Authorities were alerted to this break-in. They found Ethan smelling of alcohol, confused as to what all the fuss is about, totally in the buff, just hanging out in a funeral home. He had apparently rummaged through the morgue chemicals. What the heck? Which is questionable. He went, checked out a car that was parked outside, left an empty beer can out there. He even left a completely unsipped cold beer sitting in a display casket. Well, now Ultimately, you know, you know, what? Oh, no. no. Well, I mean, if he left a beer unsipped like that, you know he's just not right. There's just yeah, something wrong with there's this There's something guy. wrong there. You can't do that. <laughs> At least one sip, right? <laughs> Ultimately, things just didn't go as planned. He never okay. spoke to his girlfriend. He didn't. And instead ended up with criminal trespassing, criminal mischief, and burglary charges and could not explain to anyone why he was there. Literally, his only reasoning was, I was just trying to talk to my girlfriend. And there's part of me that's like, mm, did something happen? Did something happen to your girlfriend? Like, mm. is there is there a paranormal reason why you're here? Yeah. Did she pass away recently? He had no answers. Wow. And why were you doing it naked? And, and she doesn't work there. Nope. She doesn't live in a house that looks exactly like the funeral home. <laughs> nope. I don't Just know. Just hanging out in a funeral home naked. Wow. Sifting oh. through formaldehyde. Good time. I mean, look, I think you have a responsibility. If you become a viral story like this, mm -hmm. you have to do one interview. Just one. Yes. You Just have one. to do one somewhere. We have too many questions. Yeah. Thankfully, in this next one, we do have an interview from the person. 54-year-old Captain Andrew Collins had been a pilot of United Airlines for 22 years. In 2018, things were looking good for Captain Collins. He was running to be the National Union President of the Airline Pilots Association. He had just finished a 30-hour shift. I didn't know those guys worked that, that Ooh, much. That's that a seems lot. a little unsafe, but yeah. all right. Uh, he was finally getting some rest at a Westin hotel near the Denver International Airport. Don't get me started on Denver International Airport. Uh -oh. I did a whole video on it. That place is weird. Uh, <laughs> in his own words, quote, I was getting ready for a shower and was talking on the phone. It was a beautiful morning and I opened the curtains to my window. I, I couldn't see the terminal. He was on that phone call looking out of the window for 24 minutes when... There was all of a sudden a pounding at his front door. He answered it to police officers with their guns drawn. Collins was arrested for indecent exposure. 
people in the terminal claimed that they could see the naked Collins standing in his window. Quote, some witnesses said I was dancing, gyrating, and waving, he said. I'm completely innocent. The police report stated the suspect did open the window to his hotel room, which overlooks the hotel plaza, and, in full view of the public, did stand in his window fully nude, exposing himself and his genitalia to the general public. United Airlines removed him from his duties, pending an internal review. He would be suspended for six months in total. Obviously, his campaign for union president was in serious jeopardy. He wound up backing out of the race. His lawyer would go and check out that exact same room mm -hmm. on the 10th floor. Apparently, the glass at the terminal below yeah. was, it was, you know how like you can have um, glass that's reflective, like on one yeah. side it looks like a mirror, but on the other side you can look through. Well, that's basically what they had. It was like oh, a green, no. green tinted mirror if you're looking from the hotel down to the terminal, but from inside the terminal, you could see right through it. So his lawyer was pretty sure after he made that discovery that he could get the charges dropped. And they were, because under Colorado law, a person commits indecent exposure if they knowingly expose their genitals to the view of any person. So Captain Collins would receive, a, he'd actually receive a settlement from the city of Denver yeah. over the matter for uh, $300,000. Moral of the story, Standing naked in a hotel window for an extended period of time, probably not the best thing to do, but neither is an over-aggressive response to a simple misunderstanding. Apparently, the cops weren't nice. Like, uh, when they were first knocking, he was like, what's going on? And they're like, police. And he's like... I mean, they've got their guns out. That just, it does. It seems a bit much. Maybe, like, try yeah. to understand the situation real quick. And it was 10 stories, Danielle. So, like, yeah. think about that's a lot of distance. Like, even if you see someone in a window... You're 10 flights down, you know, what are you really going to see? Like, exactly. could, you could you tell that they're naked? Okay, sure. Yeah, maybe. But it's not like you're going to see any level of detail where you're like, oh my God, I'm permanently scarred or, you know, like I just. No. And when you're in an airport in a terminal waiting, you know, forever, first of all, I feel sorry for him because for 24 whole minutes, he was totally unaware. Yeah. He's on the phone. <laughs> the, these people are all like, you know, sitting in their terminal seats, like staring straight out a window. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's got to be embarrassing for him. But also they were probably very bored down there. And they're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm so serious. And they're like, you know what? <laughs> That gyrating evil man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm standing in this <laughs> dumb security line for an hour. Look at that exactly. guy up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I actually feel super sorry for him. I would be so embarrassed. Me too. See, well, if I was honestly, ever arrested for a naked crime, that would be it. Like me totally being unaware of a situation. And then yeah. I would never sleep for the rest of my life. Yep. Yep. Same never here. again. Yeah. It just sucks. Like, you know, with him having that race that was going on for that role and then all that stuff Worst just timing. kind of the timing was just terrible and honestly three hundred thousand dollars like is that worth going through six months yeah. to a year of that kind of stuff and then having yep. to try to rebuild your rep because you know mm -hmm. the story of that the reality of it and the story of it are two different things exactly with, within your co-workers and your circle of competitors that mm -hmm. were also trying to do that race trying to get that position like everyone's mm -hmm. going to be kicking that story around probably still oh remember when captain collins was naked in the window oh my gosh yeah because the you fact know? that he was there naked whether he was you know purposely doing it or not that's never going to go away yeah yeah all right daniel all up. right time halloween october 2018 setting mm -hmm. Cookout restaurant ceiling. Suspect, <laughs> sneaky naked lady. Wait, 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 wait. What's a cookout? <laughs> what's a cookout restaurant? Okay. So, cookout is the best place on earth to go when it's like at least two in the morning. Okay. You've been drinking. You safely got a ride there. Major Uber, Lyft stop there. Sure. Because Cookout's this beautiful place that's like a drive through They've got delicious, like, burgers. Oh, um, you know. that's the name of the business. Yes, I thought it's it was called a type. Cookout. No, oh, it's okay. called Cookout. It's the okay. place where you can get entrees as sides. Entrees Yes, it's a thing. It's a thing. So, like, you go there and you can get, like, 
they call them trays, a cookout tray, right? And so you're like, yeah. all right, I want a cookout tray and I want like a spicy chicken sandwich with a side of chicken nuggets and another side of a quesadilla. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you can see why it's great to go after a night of drinking at like two, three in the morning. That sounds like Hello Custom. Yes. The new product Speaking from HelloFresh. You no, want just... to switch out your do you want to switch out your side this month? That's it's fantastic. The food's so good. They okay. so fast, super affordable. They don't even have a drink called large. It's just huge. <laughs> that's like that's that. what it's called. It's so I always order a huge sweet tea. Anyways, it's fantastic. Milkshakes. You can add all different kinds of things and it's a great place. But unfortunately a lot of intoxicated people end up at this place. Sure. We call that okay. Denny's out here. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this is the place you go and you sit in the parking lot. Right. Burnouts are happening. Police are called at least like 15 times a night. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> some woman ended up in the ceiling. So it's around 10 p.m. in Tennessee and employees are working at this cookout fast food restaurant. It stays busy. You can smell this place from a mile away. You can't say no. So they're busy. So you can imagine their shock when half of a woman falls through their ceiling oh, whoa well, first and of all this, which half <laughs> the bottom half and okay. this bottom half is fully unclothed oh my goodness so as if this was not you know startling enough that some random naked woman falls halfway out of the ceiling she naked then legs. shuffles herself back up into the ceiling this is like something out of a horror movie, and they just hear her running around in the roof. It's like aliens. It's awful. <laughs> Naked I'm aliens. Gonna, I'm going to have nightmares about it, right? <laughs> so when police were called, they arrived, and at this point, nobody wanted to go up in that ceiling to figure out what this what this woman was doing. What does her upper half look like? Is she like half human, <laughs> half alien? This is like, there's something going on. And they ultimately were able to find her when she fell through the, na or the naked. She fell through the ceiling a second time. They were able to catch 26 year old Harley Morton and arrested her on charge of criminal trespassing, vandalism and disorderly conduct because I guess, I don't know, she managed to escape being naked i don't i don't know how a she naked did that escape. Yeah, yeah a naked escape i don't get it but they could get no explanation from her as to why on earth she managed to get herself into a cookout restaurant ceiling what she was doing why she was doing it nothing from her now they ended up looking around and found that for some reason she went up this stair say like the stair area completely yeah. restricted she then pried open a screen to the air conditioning vent Okay. All this being done while naked, not a stitch of her clothing was found anywhere. And then that is when she was running around in the ceiling. Well, Danielle, you explained it. It's because of how good the place smells. It has to be it. It's, it's either that or she was looking for her boyfriend. It's one of the oh, other. boy. <laughs> I was just looking for my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm telling you, but you like have to know cookout to understand because it's, you can't, if there's no inside seating, it's like one tiny little strip of a place. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's scary because it's like, it's like that story. They've got glass. Like the whole thing is glass, but it's black, tinted black. So you, it's a reflection mm -hmm. and all the workers are staring at you while you're in line. They're judging the fact that you just ordered three entrees <laughs> and called it one meal. Well, at least they have the, uh, the windows all kinds of tinted out. So people can't see how, uh, how mm -hmm. many different sides you're getting uh, exactly. on this side of another burger, please. Yeah. No, but you can do it. <laughs> You can do it. You can order like a cookout tray with three hot dog, like sets of hot dogs. It's bizarre. Anyways, oh, dangerous. I'm telling you, but this doesn't surprise me for cookout. I'm just wondering what everyone that sits in their car and eats and watches cookout. I'm wondering what they thought when they watched this woman climb up naked to the top Oof. of this roof and then just crawl in the ceiling. I don't know. Had to have happened. It's another weird one. Uh, this one kind of interesting. Um, because we have not just a naked criminal, maybe a naked hero too. Oh boy. And not Jessica Smith. We've already covered Man. her story. Maybe I, I love found these another naked one. heroes. Yeah. March, 2019 in Stockholm, Sweden. Now, you know, it can get really cold outside there. And the bass stew is known as a crucial part of Swedish culture. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a public sauna. An officer had just sat down in one. As he was acclimating to the heat and probably trying to unwind from his stressful work on his day off, he found his stressful work staring back at him. 
In the same sauna was a man who was sentenced to prison for a drug offense, but he had skipped town before serving that sentence. So all of a sudden these guys are looking at each other and there's a moment of recognition <laughs> like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, I know you, don't I? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I know you. <laughs> a spokesperson from the department noted, it's easier to take action when you have your colleagues with you and all your tools and equipment. This was as stripped down as it gets in more ways than one. Yep. Literally, that's his quote. I did not add that. <laughs> Thankfully, the officer was able to execute a naked arrest on the naked convict, and he even got paid overtime for it since it was his days his day off. The department's Facebook page celebrated it with the title of Naked Arrest on their post, though they kept the officer's name private, and they uh, decided to put out a little warning to naked criminals everywhere, quote, even if you don't see us, we are there. And we might be naked too. <laughs> exactly. We'll do whatever we need to find you. That makes it so much creepier. <laughs> yeah. There's a naked so policeman creepy. coming after you. <laughs> Could you imagine though? I feel like you already have to have like this whole other level of confidence to be a police officer, oh, yeah. you know, and oh, yeah. face these criminals and do these things. But <laughs> just being completely naked, like it's awkward enough if they're just naked. But if you yeah. are also naked, this just takes things to a whole other level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That moment had to be super weird, though. Just locking eyes and kind of like, aren't nope. you the guy that I helped put away? Oh. And did they have yeah. to stand there naked that whole time waiting for backup or something? Do you think? Uh, I couldn't find a ton of detail on it, but I did see that there were um, clothed officers that showed up to help with the arrest. So basically, he kept him at the spot, uh, <laughs> told someone to go call police or something like that. So he... he <laughs> He kept him in the sauna somehow. Poor guy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> my, my imagination needs to be shut off right now. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know where it wants to go oh, with that. Oh, good grief. So. All right. Now, this, this is kind of one of my nightmares. All right. So there was a man woken from his sleep a handful of times in April of 2021. So this isn't even that long ago. Right. Yeah. We've already been through enough. Imagine you wake up multiple times and you're like swearing you hear someone in your house. Okay. That's what he thought. He's like, you know, maybe I'm just hearing things. Maybe I'm hearing neighbors. Maybe there's an animal wandering around. But he absolutely did not expect to find what he did the following morning. So upon waking up, for my assumption also, he lived alone. But okay. he walked down the hall, you know, probably was heading for a cup of coffee and peered into his guest bedroom and saw a completely naked woman that he did not know sleeping on a blow-up mattress. Did he know the blow-up mattress? I don't know. I've wondered <laughs> that. I have wondered that. I'm like, did she bring the blow-up mattress right. or was that already there? Yeah, did she find his and blow did, it up? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've got all these questions still. Mm -hmm. Now, shocked, he woke this woman up and was like, you have got to get out of here. And you would think at that point, this woman's like, Oh no, I have to get out. But instead she was like, absolutely not. And I am not putting my clothes back on. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, whatever. I'm calling the police. Now, Is when this police, a pickup line at this point? <laughs> I think so. Look, at this point. Now when police arrived, they brought the 28 year old woman outside and tried to figure out, you know, what is going on. They couldn't even get her to put clothes on. And she explained to them that she just needed a place to stay. She told them that in 2009. Okay. She lived in the home. Uh, and because of that, she should be allowed to stay there whenever she wanted. She lived in the home 12 years before. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so therefore she should be allowed to go in whenever she wants to completely strip naked, blow up a blow up mattress and sleep in that spare bedroom. Well, how could they argue with that? They can't. <laughs> they can't. No, you can't because it's not logical at no, all. No, you can't. Exactly. It's not logical. You can't argue with it. You will make your head hurt. So mm. that's obviously not how things work. They tried to explain this to her. She was so pissed off. She spit on the police officer and ended up being charged with criminal trespassing and harassment of a public servant. And she never let go of her reasoning of, I lived there before. I deserve a place to stay. Wow. Wow. Well, Danielle, I learned a very important lesson through all the stories mm -hmm. that we went through today. And that is that um, there are far too many 
lingering questions with these very important stories. So, so many. Everyone listening, please sign our change.org petition <laughs> to put into law <laughs> that if you are viral for one of these stories, you must be interviewed once. You have to. <laughs> Like, I can't sit here knowing half the things that I know now. No. I'm no. missing, like, that one last piece of the puzzle that forever drives you crazy. I'm forever changed after this episode. I, I don't know. I don't know how we go back. And I have to apologize to everyone. I think you're changed, too. You as a <laughs> listener. We all just... We went through a lot this episode, and we've all permanently changed. We Even did. in my research alone. Do you know how many people show up naked in random people's houses and says, this is my house now? Such a weird thing. I mean, I saw at least 10 stories. This is my house now. I'm just completely naked. Yeah. Yeah. Are they hoping the shock factor, like someone would just agree all of a sudden? Oh, I don't. yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. Let me just <laughs> yeah, let me I'm pack packing. my stuff <laughs> I'm out of here. Or are you supposed to respond by taking your clothes off? No, I it's know. my house. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more naked than you. I know. Well, it's funny because you would think that not having clothes on, you know, it usually makes people less confident. But these people, man, these it, people. Like, yeah. it, it lights a fire. Well, and let's be honest. A lot of these stories are about uh, ladies in their late 20s. I've also noticed that yes. trend through today's stories. Look, you will never see me in any of these articles. Danielle, I, give, <laughs> I gave you the list of states you could go to. You told me you didn't care. All right, heading to California. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care anymore. The Danielle Hallen tour. <laughs> oh, goodness. What an episode. Well, you guys, who's going to win this month? <laughs> I can't even take it seriously. We all lost. That's we, all I know. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I lost brain cells. I yep. lost hope. Yep. I lost a whole lot. But you yep. guys, you know, you ultimately get to decide who gets to at least walk away knowing that we did we accomplished something you know yes. we told the best naked crime story no matter how bizarre it was that's right and you can give us those votes over at our twitter account at crime after pod you can do that for the first seven days after the episode drops or you can also head over to www.crimeaftercrimepodcast.com and vote there we also have a link in the description box down below you can also still click the little letter i it'll take you straight there give us your vote Absolutely. At crimeaftercrimepodcast.com, you can find all the links you'll ever need, including where to find more content by Danielle and myself, how to suggest show topics, we love your suggestions, mm -hmm. how to join our Patreon, or how to make sure that you're not caught naked somewhere. Yes. Shop our Teespring store. Mm -hmm. We Buy can some help clothes. you. We Buy can. some clothes, would you? We can help you. <laughs> <laughs> We also need to say a huge thank you to our patrons. You guys, it's so much fun over there. Our patrons get a bonus Patreon special segment monthly where John and I have awesome conversations, ask each mm -hmm. other crazy questions. You hear all about my farm updates. It's become like an actual segment. Yes. Plus, patrons get a personal shout out in upcoming Patreon special episodes. That's right. We're going to be back next month with a topic I'm really looking forward to. I've already got a couple of ideas for stories on this ridiculous ransoms this one's gonna get wild i've got mm -hmm. a feeling i think so too <laughs> this show is produced and hosted by myself danielle hallen and the amazing king of research john lorden <laughs> you enjoyed, there. <laughs> thank you so much if you enjoyed today's episode please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on and the best way to help others find us tell your friends tell your family tell them all that you love crime after crime. And Thank you guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.